do you really need to spend extra money for that faster RAM kits? On our system, we have the Corsair DDR5 6000 CL30 kit. I think this is like a good, decent option, but should I go and buy better kits? Oh, did someone say better kits? I have one, bruh. This is the Kingpack CL26 RAM kit. Would you like to try it? Um, sure. What's good about it? Well, this one, brother, has really good timings and it has RGB. Here you go. Uh, okay, sure. Let's try this out. So King Bank sent us these kits and this is like a DDR5 6000 CL26 kit. For you guys who are new to PC gaming, I know you will have a lot of questions regarding RAM kits and which one's better, right? So I'm just going to simplify this one. So DDR5 is the type of RAM kit that you have. It's not good or bad. It just means that if you have like an AM4 system, what you need is DDR4. If you have an AM5 system, you can only pick a DDR5 RAM kit. If you have an Intel 12th generation up to the 14th generation, you can have either. You can have DDR4 or DDR5, but that depends on your motherboard. So you have to check on which one is compatible with your system. In terms of the 6000 baht is the mega transfers per second. Ah, so that's just bigger number better, right? I think I know that one. Well, not necessarily. If you're on the AM5 platform, the optimal number would be between 6000 and 6400. However, if you're with an Intel platform, platform go ball steep higher number is better however when you go higher you also introduce higher chances of instability and this is why most intel users they, they want to aim for like ram kits with higher mega transfers per second they would pick really expensive boards that can handle those speeds and then for the cl26 bit this is basically just a cast latency or let's just call it timings right or sub timings now this is like a series of numbers like for our king bank here 26 36 36 66 102 and for our course air kit 30 36 36 76 112 now for these series of numbers it's just easy the lower and the tighter it is the better it is in terms of the brand it doesn't matter boys could be king bank could be course any brand it doesn't matter because there's only three main uh, manufacturers and that's samsung micron and sk hynix and for our king bank kit this one has sk hynix i think it's an adi chip and for course here it's an sk Hynix chip as well. So the, the, the brands just basically ensure that these RAM kits will function at this specific level of timing or speeds. To enable these speeds, you need to go into the BIOS and enable Expo for AMD or XMP if you're running an Intel setup. Okay, okay, enough of the technical stuff. Let's run these kits in our games and we're gonna run this at 1440p resolution because that's what you boys use. And we'll be running it on our 9800X 3D and our X9070 XT set up so yeah let's start with our first game cyberpunk 2077 and in here boys with our ryzen 9800 x3d it's a little bit uh difference here like there's no gains on the average fps but you know a little bit of the lows here and then you lose on the 0.1 percent lows but as i've said before that's because we only have a same mega transfers per second but it's just the timings that are a bit different so you wouldn't expect too much difference between these two kits but bro you're using a 9800 x3d chip yeah obviously it would run good so it doesn't really matter which ever ram kit that you use that's actually a fair point bro so let's run it on our ryzen 7600 this is how it runs on our ryzen 7600 or if you have a 78 500 if that's the same thing we actually gain fps and on the lows as well slightly with our king bank cl26 ram kits when we move on to the next game and this is oblivion remastered with our king bank cl26 kits we actually gain lows man like the lows are actually better and yeah this game has a lot of stutters but these ram kits do help on this game when we go back to our ryzen 7600 system the non-x3d boom look at that one boys we actually gain average fps the lows are better like that's what 13 percent on the one percent lows and 57 percent on the 0.1 percent lows like i know it's still stuttery but actually it's much better with our king bank cl26 and then stellar blade now we do we don't gain fps here but the lows are extremely bitter with our CL26 
RAM kit. When we move on to our non X3D chip, now we're actually gaining better lows as well. Not so much on the 0.1% lows, but the 1% lows are actually much better here. We even gain a little bit of um, FPS and there's a um, benchmark. Okay, let's now move on to games that really matter in terms of high frame rates. And here we have Warzone. For the COD bros out there, there you go. 9800X3D with a CL26 kit. And yeah, you gain a little bit in terms of the 1% lows, just a little bit. When we go into our firing benchmark, boom. Yeah, we gain a little bit on the 1% lows. Yeah, there is a little bit of difference there on the average FPS. When we move on to our Ryzen 7600, look at that one, boys. Yes, we are gaining, and this this is why the RAM makes um, some difference in here. See, it's only a little bit of the sub timings uh, adjusted, but it's actually impacting our performance here. However, when we go to the um, firing benchmark, you actually lose on, on the lows here. So it's a mixed bag here for Warzone. It's not necessarily bitter. Let's move on to the next game, Delta Force, another game which demands a lot of FPS, and we've got 1440p low settings here with FSR four and boom with that one boys we're only gaining on the 0.1 percent lows on our 9800 x3d setup on our um firing benchmark yeah that's pretty close right the only difference here is actually just the 0.1 percent lows let's move on to our ryzen 7600 and boom it's not much difference here boys it's more or less the same so obviously this game isn't that much affected let's go to the firing benchmark and yeah we actually lost the lows uh, a little bit on the lows here which is yeah it's, it's a bit of a trade-off here so just for this specific game you are losing about three percent on the lows so as you can see it's not always uh, across the board and before see so guys if you like videos like this subscribe to the channel i've got a lot of videos coming up with our rx 9060 xd testing so yeah subscribe anyway let's move on in pubg with our 9800 x3d boom the lows, the 1% lows are a little bit lower compared to our regular CL30 kit. On our firing benchmark, this is where it matters, boys. We have those smokes, we have those firing shots, and here we go. We're gaining average FPS, and the lows are actually better with our CL26 RAM kit. When we move on to our Ryzen non-X3D chip, here we go, boys. We're actually gaining performance here. It's not much, but we're actually gaining just with a little bit of timing. When we go to our heavy action benchmarks, as the the same thing right we're gaining a little bit of performance as well especially on the 0.1 percent lows so it's actually also better for the non x3d chip you can say that the the memory um memory setup actually affects pubg especially on this firing benchmark okay Let's move on to the games, the more competitive games that demand a whole lot of frame rates where we rely mostly on the CPU to drive that force. So the RAM will play an important factor here. Here we go. Fortnite, boys, performance mode. And this is 1440p and you are getting actually um, FPS with our with our CL26 kit and the 9800X3D. Let's have a look on the non-X3D chip and boom. Gain a little bit as well on the lows and about like much higher on the 0.1% low so it's much more stable in here compared to the CL30 kit. Another game that's highly competitive and demands a lot of frame rates is Valorant and here we go boys it's a heavy action scenes with a lot of bots in here. Even with our 9800X3D processor we are gaining better performance with our King Bank CL26 kit. Let's have a look on how it performs on the non X3D chip and boom look at that one boys. Additional 5% performance on the lows and 13% on the 0.1% lows this is much more stable compared to just using the CL30 kit. Valorant really demands stability especially when you're in those clutch moments you really like that stability. Oh yeah bro I like the sign of that one because like I really want to climb to that silver one. It's stuck in bronze man. I think I need this RAM kit. Um, yeah yeah it depends right yeah 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 you probably need it yeah yeah okay let's move on to our hero shooters and first up is apex legends on our heavy action scenes look at that one boys yes we have maxed out our fps here but with our cl26 kit we are gaining lows right the better lows in there seven percent better lows and about four percent not point one percent lows on a heavy action benchmark static scenes is not so much right we're only gaining about like three percent point one percent lows when we move to our non x3d chips same thing getting a little bit on the lows here and i think that's probably because 
because we're limited in the CPU as well. Yeah, I think we're bottleneck by our CPU here. Mm -hmm. And on a static scenes, there's not much going on. Let's move on to the next game, Marvel Rivals. And in this one, boys, with our 9800X 3D, it's not so much right not so much difference here in comparing our our corsair kit against the king bank kit however when we move to our non x3d chip this is where you would see the the performance difference with those two kits here three percent better lows and about seven percent better 0.1 percent lows and do not boys the, the games that you've seen here we've run this multiple times until we were able to achieve consistent performance okay let's move on to our pve games and first up is hell divers 2 and with hell divers 2 using our 9800 x 3D, boom, there's not much difference on the lows and average FPS is on the 0.1% lows. How about when we look at the strategy benchmark? Not much. So it doesn't really affect that much with our X3D chip. Let's have a look at our non X3D chip. Boom not much as well maybe better 0.1 percent lows let's see how it goes on the stratagem benchmark it's the same thing right you get better 0.1 percent lows with the cl26 ram kit okay last game battle of xl2 there's not much like not much difference here we are definitely gpu bound here it's quite different if you're playing in game because you'll have a lot of those npcs in there a lot of the mobs when we move on to our non x3d chip yeah that's pretty close that's really close to each other right it's only about like one fps difference on the low so not much really it's more like margin errors battle of xl2 isn't really affected by your ram setup when we look at it overall when we're comparing with our cl30 corsair kit against the king bank cl26 using our 9800 x3d on the average fps the average is about like zero you don't really gain any fps in here on the lows you do get about like two percent better lows and about like 13% better 0.1% lows which is actually pretty good like there obviously there are outliers on that run you got stellar blade which has a really high difference between the 0.1% lows and delta force on the firing benchmark something to mention about is apex legends and valorant do have that boost on the 1% lows that's about 7% boost on the 1% lows and oblivion is just much better on the uh, cl26 kits but as you know that game's like a bit stuttery when we are using Using our non X3D chip, our Ryzen 7600, we actually gain an average of 1% um, FPS across all our benchmarks and about like 2% better in terms of the 1% lows and about 8% better on the 0.1% lows depending on the game. So you'll have to review which game actually works for you in terms of using these RAM kits. Using our King Bank CL26 kit, that's actually better across the board, especially on the lows. Like the only game that you were in, you gain. FPS is just Oblivion Remastered on our Ryzen 7600. Okay, so if you're only interested on those high frame rate competitive games like those CPU bound games like Fortnite, when we compare to like the stock 4800 CL40 against the CL30 Corsair and the CL26 King Bank, you actually gain using our 9800X3D, you actually gain better lows. Yes, you do lose out on the FPS, but the lows are better overall in this game. When we move to the Ryzen 7600 using the same kits, you're actually gaining whether you are on the CL30 or on the CL26. So you can see that it's actually much more effective on the non X3D chip. When we move on to Valorant, and this one's a bit of a, a different scenario. Yes, on our like stock configuration, which is the 4800 mega transfers per second, it's better compared to the CL30 in terms of the average FPS and the lows. However, the CL26 comes out as much better like, on all three scenarios. Okay, how about Warzone, right? So Warzone, as we said before, with our 9800X3D chip, there's not actually not much difference here on the average FPS and the lows on our running benchmark. When we move into the firing benchmark, the lows are better with better uh, memory combined with our 9800X3D. When we move on to our non-X3D chip, boom, look at that one, boys. We're actually better compared to the stock for the 800 RAM. So 30 percent better average fps on the cl30 and about 15 percent better average fps on the cl26 kids five percent on the lows with the cl30 30 percent better lows on the cl26 king back kit on our firing benchmark it's the same scenario you are actually much better with the better ram which is you know our ideal ram 6000 mega transfers per second basically you still gain performance regardless of which which one you get and so is it like practical for me to get those cl26 
96 gram gets in because uh, you haven't answered the question yet, bro. Well, that's a good question. Let's compare systems. So if we have a 9800X3D system, the 9800X3D costs about $450. You get B650, which is about like $150 and a CL30 kit. That's what we have, of course, here is about $125. That's totals to about $720. Let's use that, that setup against like just say a 7500F from AliExpress, which is about like 135 the same B650. And then we've got the King Bank CL26 kit, which is in Alex. You can buy an AliExpress and they even have that discount code in there. That's 154 US dollars. That's $30 more compared to the Corsair CL30 kit. The total for this setup is about like $434. If you look at that one, the 9800X3D is 65% more expensive compared to our 7500F uh, setup. If you look at Fortnite, boom. Look at that one, boys. Uh, you do gain 49% better frame rates and better lows, 40 plus percent better lows with the 9800X3D setup. However, you do have to take into account that you are paying 65% more. In terms of Valorant, you are only going to gain 27% more FPS with our 9800X3D setup, which is 65% more expensive. However, the lows are about like a mixed bag in there, like 43% better on the 1% lows and 77% better on the 1% lows. Is that worth 65% more. Now, that depends on your budget and your circumstances. If you ask me, 30 bucks just to gain a little bit of performance with a non-X3D chip, I would go for that one because the difference between these processors, 130 against a 450 processor, that's a huge difference there. So I might as well just spend 25 bucks and get some better RAM kits, which will boost slightly the performance of your gaming. But what do you think?